Hi, my name is Sangwoo, and I'm going to talk about React Native animation. React Native is basically React for mobile. You don't have to learn other languages to build a mobile app. You can take your same React knowledge and create a mobile app like you do for websites. Among some differences between React and React Native, I chose animation because it makes an app way more interesting and fun to interact with, which is what we probably want in our apps. Uh, without going in too deep, I want to show what it can do and show you a gist of how animation works in React Native. Oops. So, how, how to use React Native in a nutshell. Step one, don't forget to import. Um, you have to import animated library from React Native. I put this slide in because <laughs> I always forget to import stuff. And step two, you have to create a new animation. Uh, you have to create a new animation variable and this dot state inside the constructor and assign a variable with the uh, initial value of the animation. So in this example, this dot state that slide is a new animation with initial value of <clears throat> like x is zero and y is zero. It's shortened by saying animated, new animated that value x, y, invoked. Then step three, what should it do? You have to tell what the particular animation variable should do. Here we're telling the, this dot state that slide to spring 20 pixels to the right. So this dot state that slide here, we're telling it to spring to value x 20 and y 0. So just moving 20 pixels to the right. You could either store this whole animation, animated that spring, yada, 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 inside another property like this that slide, right? Or you can just call the animated that spring just by itself. You don't have to store it. Step four, apply the animation. Apply this animation variable inside style property of animatable elements. Um, in this case, the animatable elements is uh, animated.view. Um, so what are animatable elements? That's a good question. Animations work only on these animatable elements. There are a few of these out of the box, which are animated.view, animated.text, animated.image, and scroll view but you can also create your own animatable element if you want, but you'll mostly use these out of the box elements. And then the last step is to start the animation. So previously we stored the whole animation inside uh, this dot slide, right? Now you just start it, you trigger the animation by saying this dot slide, right, dot start in both. Um, if you don't do dot start, your animation will never be triggered and you'll never see the magic happen. And the animation is applied to the, the animatable element that you assigned it to, the, that has the animation as the style property. And that element will be animated. So here are some of the, well, most, most of the animation types. On the left side, we have timing, spring, decay, delay, loop. And these are just one independence uh, animations. While on the right side, you see sequence, parallel, and stagger. These are, these take in an array of the animations on the left side we see here. So it takes in an array of independent animations. So sequence executes those array of animations in sequence and parallel executes all those uh, animations at the same time and stagger executes those uh, animations with a delay in between. So, and pan responder is a very tricky thing to deal with, but because, because it's harder to use, it allows us to do more cool animation stuff. So I'll show you my code demonstration. Uh, okay, so this is using a program called Expo. It's, it allows you to use a, a mobile platform and see how it looks, uh, how your stuff looks like in the 
actual phone. So I have here timing, spring decay, sequence, parallel. Uh, and as I said, these are the initial value of the animation defined. And then here we see that um, we're storing this timing anim, which is stored here, is stored into the property style of this animated.view. It has to be animated.view. You can't do it on a button or a single view. It has to be an animatable element. And then when we click on the button, it's going to handle fading, or for all of these, just handle uh, some animation. And what's going to happen is uh, handle fading. You see that <clears throat> you take the animation that we defined in the constructor, and the 0 to 1 will do. And then the, uh, the opacity is the, the whole animation. And we're calling dot start on that animation to see the effect happen. So timing, when we click on timing, it does fade in. And then all these have like a reset uh, animation, which is the same animation. It's a spring animation. So timing fades in, goes back to its original state. Spring moves right. It springs to the right and then uh, reverts back to where it was. Decay takes in an initial velocity and then it has a deceleration. So it doesn't, it has, it, dis, it decelerates towards the end and then it reverts back. And sequence, it fades in, waits a bit, and then slides right and then goes back. And parallel, it's rotating and then sliding to the right. So that's cool. So pan responder, I told you that the pan responder is pretty tricky. <laughs> This is the code for pan responder. You need all of these to get started with pan responder. It's relatively a lot more code, but it allows for cool things. So you can just, just pretend my cursor is your finger. So it listens to your finger and then it just carries that element everywhere I want it to be. And then notice that um depending on where the screen of your element is, it rotates left and right. So that's cool. So yeah, here is my <laughs> gist of animation and I hope you enjoyed it. The rest of my tech talk and thank you very much.